Ephesians chapter number 2. I'm going to read some very familiar verses. It hopes to be of help to you this morning. The Bible says in verse number 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the hope we have today, the blessed hope. Today may be the very day that the trump of God sounds, and God, you take your church out of this vile, wicked world. Lord, it would be a blessing for the saved, but it sure will be the beginning of sorrows for the lost. So God, I pray if there be any amongst us today who are lost, that today would be the day that they give their heart and life to Jesus. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you would move accordingly in the service. I pray you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you wouldn't allow the devil to interfere with the service. But I certainly pray that, Lord, you would bless and speak to our hearts. Lord, we do live in a perverse generation, and your children have to live in this world, even though we're not of this world. And God, I pray today that you would revive their hearts, refresh their spirits. Amen. God, do something for them, as Brother Ron's already prayed, in this haven, this oasis we have in this destitute world. Now, Father, I do pray, Lord, for those that are sick. I pray especially for Miss Mary. I pray for Miss Cindy Cato and others, Lord, you would touch them. I do pray for the revival meetings going on. I pray for the conference down in St. Lucia. Lord, you know what is needed. And I pray that, Lord, you would pour out of yourself mighty power in these meetings these days. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would not be denied and a true move of God would break out like one we have never seen. Now, Father, I pray may it even begin here today and may it begin in us. God, do a work in our hearts. We'll bless you for it. Use this unworthy vessel. Have your will and way. We'll thank you and praise you for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice a few things. I want you to notice, first of all, the method of salvation. We find in verse number 8, the Bible is very clear, For by grace are you saved through faith. Grace simply means we receive something that we do not deserve. And the only way we can receive this thing that we do not deserve is by faith. We must believe what thus saith the Lord. We must believe that Jesus came, and he came in due season, born of a virgin, lived amongst men. He fulfilled the law of God by, not, by living a sinless, perfect life. He went to the cross of Calvary where he bled and died to become our Savior, our sacrifice, our substitute. He shed his blood for our atonement. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And we must believe that we have a need of a Savior. And Jesus is the only one who can save us. And if we'll by faith put our faith and trust in Him, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We can be saved by grace through faith today. That's the only way anybody's going to get saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And that's the only way you can be saved. Uh, we live in a day and age where there's over 300 different religions and denominations in America alone. We live in a day and age where people will say things like this. Uh, there's many roads that lead to heaven. No, there's not. There's only one way, and His name is Jesus. And you'll come by Jesus or you won't make it, friend. It's the only means of salvation. We see the method of salvation. Notice the misunderstanding of salvation. Look again at verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You can't earn your way to heaven. You can't buy your way to heaven. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't do anything to merit heaven. 
The only thing you can do to get to go to heaven is realize you're lost. And you need Jesus to save you. It's not a works that we've done. I've met people over the years say, Well, preacher, I've been baptized. Well, that don't mean anything. Uh, I know a lot of people that's baptized cats and held them down for a long time. And them cats didn't go to heaven. And they didn't have nine lives. Huh? You can be baptized. I didn't go. Don't call Pete on me. I didn't say I did it. Huh? But listen. You say, preacher, you shouldn't say that about animals. What I'm trying to say is, baptism won't save you. Bad people say, well, I'm religious. Religion won't save you. All religion brings is damnation. It just lets you know you've got to do something uh, 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 in order to appease whoever's ahead of the religion. Amen. Hmm? You said, not of works that we've done. My dear friends, you can join a church, you can be baptized, you can give all you, you own and all you could ever earn in ten lifetimes, and you still won't make it to heaven. Right. Hmm? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Right. Amen. You can't earn this gift. Right. This gift was freely given on the cross of Calvary. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, I'm glad that fits all of us, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. The misunderstanding of salvation is you can do something to earn it. Yeah. Hmm? How many of you remember when you was little and you hadn't been good but at birthday time or Christmas time you got gifts anyway? You didn't deserve them, but somebody was kind to you. Amen. Or how many times did mom and dad tell you no, but grandma and grandpa said yes? I got a feeling that's going to happen a whole lot at the foster household. Huh? You say, what are you saying? There's a lot of times we, we haven't deserved a gift. Amen. But somebody intervened and gave us one anyway. Amen. None of us deserve heaven. But Jesus intervened, and God will give it to us anyway if we put our faith in Christ. We see the method of salvation, the misunderstanding of salvation. Notice the maligning of salvation. Look at verse number 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Hmm? There's a lot of people, if they could give enough money, then they would go to heaven and say, look what I did to get here. They'd be boasting in themselves. But can I say that everybody who goes to heaven is going to be boasting in one person. His name is Jesus. Uh, by the way, even those that don't go to heaven are still going to bow before him and proclaim him Lord of lords and King of kings. Because he's the only one worth boasting about. And the maligning of salvation is that people think they can earn their way and they can take credit for it. That's why Jesus made a way where it's simple that even a child can understand. But we all got to come the same way. So the only one we can brag on and boast on is Him. But then notice the meaning of salvation. Look at verse number 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. What do you say, preach, about the meaning of salvation? Notice if you will, the execution of salvation. The Bible says, for we are His workmanship. That word workmanship means handiwork. That means God reached down and He took nothing, just some old vessels of clay, and He did a work. You see, we're just the clay. He's the potter. And He did a handiwork. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. Uh, we could not reach to heaven. We couldn't get to heaven. Uh, but he reached way down to where we were uh, and drew us up out of that horrible pit of sin. Uh, and he began a handiwork in us. Uh, friend, in it a blessing? Uh, uh, he saved us and sealed us. Uh, and he's been working on us. Uh, and one of these days, we'll get a body fastened just like his. Uh, where do you see the handiwork of God when it's on full display in heaven one day? Uh, can I say it's his workmanship? We see the execution of salvation. Not only that, notice the endeavor of salvation. Look what it says. For we are His workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Can I say the only reason that we can be part of the workmanship or handiwork of God, we had to come through and by Christ Jesus. The workmanship is in Christ Jesus. I'm glad I'm in Him and He's in me. Hey, He took up His abode in me with, with the Holy Spirit of God when He saved me. But friend, when I called on Him, He engrafted me in the palm of His hand. I'm in His hand, hallelujah. Hey, and his hand's in the Father's hand. Uh, and no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. Uh, what a blessing to be in today. Uh, I'm in Christ Jesus. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the Lord looks at me uh, as if I'm already there because he sees me in Christ. I say hallelujah. Amen. We see the endeavor for salvation is for folks to be in Christ. Yeah. We see the workmanship. The execution, the endeavor in Christ Jesus. But notice the enactment. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Uh, 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 the enactment, what was ordained of God, uh, is that everybody would be predestinated uh, to be saved in Christ Jesus. Boy, that scared you. He didn't predestinate us to be saved or lost. But all those that would be saved, it was ordained of God that we would be saved in Christ Jesus. Hmm? He was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. God put this plan together before he even made man, before man fell to sin. Uh, God enacted, he ordained the plan, uh, and the plan would be uh, we'd be in Christ Jesus, created unto good works, uh, 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 that in Christ Jesus uh, we could walk in those good works. Uh, listen, I couldn't keep myself saved, uh, uh, but I'm glad I'm saved forevermore because I'm in Christ. Uh, can I say there is no good in me? Uh, there is no good that I I have ever done. There is none righteous, no, not one. Uh, uh, but I have been robed in His righteousness uh, and because He indwells me uh, and because uh, on occasion I do mind Him and do follow Him and do walk in Him, uh, it is those times uh, He through me does things that brings glory to His name. Uh, we see the meaning of salvation. God saved us to bring glory to Him. God took a nothing, a zero, with the hole knocked out of it and made us everything. We've been adopted into the family of God, born into the family of God. One day we'll be married into the family of God because it's all been the work of God. And He gets all the praise and glory for it. Uh, last week I preached on, it's great to be saved. This week I'd like to preach on, if I wasn't saved. Hmm. Now it's great to be saved. Amen. We find exactly what happens in the salvation process in this chapter. In verse number 1 it says, And you hath he quickened, which means made alive. Hmm. Why? Because we were dead in trespasses and sins. We were living, we were breathing God's air, walking on God's earth, but we were dead to God. Right. But it took a spiritual birth to make us alive. Because we were dead to God. Goes in verse number 2, Where in a time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power of the air. The devil owned you, and he controlled you. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, uh, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh uh, and of the mind, uh, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Uh, but God, who is rich in mercy, uh, for his great love wherewith he loved us uh, even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace you're saved Amen. it's great to be saved I shouldn't be saved uh, I was dead in my sins I was a sinner by practice, sinner by birth, sinner by nature. Uh, I deserve to go to hell today uh, and friend if I was not saved that's just where I'd be headed Amen. Mm. if I wasn't saved i got thinking about this this week. Boy, it's great to be saved. But if I wasn't saved, I shudder to think what my life would be. Can I say, first of all, if I wasn't saved, I'd be wicked. Hmm. On my best day, I'm not real good now. 
But if I wasn't saved, I'd be wicked. Can I say, if I wasn't saved, most likely uh, I'd be an alcoholic, or a fancier term, a drunk. Right. Mm. If I wasn't saved, uh, I'd be an addict. I'd be addicted to something. Say, preacher, how do you know that? Because I know well, I'm one of the only people that I know of that likes drinking NyQuil. <laughs> Whenever I'm sick, bring out the NyQuil. Huh? I could take a shot of that and take it right down. I'd be a whiskey drinker, I'm telling you. If I wasn't saved, I'm not making fun. If I wasn't saved, I'd be a whiskey drinker. I'd be a hard liquor kind of guy. I'd be addicted to something today if I wasn't saved. Hmm? I'd be wicked. If I wasn't saved, can I say, uh, I'd probably be an adulterer. I would not have the family that I have today. Hmm? Uh, used to, we'd go to Kroger, and we could feed all five of us for what we just feed Jordan now. I'm not thrown off for spending the same money. We're getting less groceries. Huh? Yeah. Huh? And used to, we could feed the whole family at McDonald's for 20 bucks. Now you can't get a Coke for 20 bucks there no more. It's crazy. Not literally, Kenzie. You can get a Coke for 20 bucks, all right? You just can't get fries with it, all right? Why go to McDonald's if you don't get the fries? Huh? But what I'm saying is, if I wasn't saved, I'd be worried. I'd be worried what my 401k was doing, and I'd be worried about uh, making the dollar stretch, and I'd be worried about what fuel costs are going to be this winter, and I'd be worried about hoping we don't have real cold and a lot of snow, and I'd be worried about all that stuff. I'd be worried about mashed potato brains in the office. I'd be worried about all that. I would. I'd be worried. Huh? But listen, I've been around since JFK. I've seen them come and go. But I know the one who sets people in position of authority. But if I wasn't saved, I wouldn't know that. I'd be worried. Not only be worried about the economy, I'd be worried about the environment of governmental affairs throughout the world. Hmm. Can I say... Just about every country, their sustainability used to be based on the American dollar. Now, they don't base it on the American dollar. Now, it's all based on China. and It's all based on Russia. It's all based here, all based there. And I mean, they're all on the brink of destruction. Hmm. Do you realize why we sit here? We're about $35 trillion in debt in America. That means our great, 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 great grandchildren couldn't pay off that debt. Do you think they're going to lower your taxes? No. And how come we can't feed our homeless veterans in America, but we've given Ukraine more and so much money that they could buy Russia? They don't even need to be in a war with them anymore. Just buy them. Of course, they're not going to be able to buy Russia because they're giving it back to our politicians who's giving it to them. But anyway, if I wasn't saved and I saw all this junk going on, I'd be really worried. Hmm. Say, Preacher, are you worried today? Nope. Because I know there's coming a day there's going to be a one world government, a one world religious system, and there's going to be a leader called the Antichrist, and I'll be out of here long before it ever happens. But if I wasn't saved, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I'd be drinking more NyQuil to go to bed. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, if I wasn't saved, I'd be worried. I'd be worried about the events of the day. Uh, I'd be worried about Israel being in a war. You see, remember the Six-Day War? Most of you don't. Kids Google it. They won't teach you that in history class anymore. Go study the Six-Day War. When that thing broke out, America was tore out, up. Our churches were full. People thought the Lord was coming back then. Now, Israel's in war, and people don't even care. You know why? Because Christians haven't been 
sharing the gospel like we should and telling the truth like we should and folks have no idea what Israel is and what it's all about. Tell me in America when they protest Israel for a bunch of terrorists who have murdered women and babies and beheaded women and babies and have cut the hearts out of women and babies and we let politicians and universities stand and herald these terrorists? Well, if I wasn't saved, I'd be worried. But see, being saved, I know that all nations are going to turn against Israel. Hmm? I'm just saying. If I wasn't saved... I'd be on hell's waiting list. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 5.14, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Yeah. Hell would be waiting on me and I'd be there, headed there in the fast lane. Amen. If I wasn't saved. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 20, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. Well, if I wasn't saved, hell would be waiting on me. They'd have, my, they'd have a reservation. They'd have a chain reserved for me. Hmm? They'd have a part in the deepest, darkest region of the damned for me. But I got another reservation. Because I am saved. And I got a mansion waiting for me over on the other side. Huh? I'm glad I have a blessed hope today. But if I wasn't saved, hell would be waiting on me, just like hell's waiting on every sinner. That's why hell fights so much against Christians and so much against churches. Doesn't want you telling the world that there's a hell waiting on them. If I wasn't saved, I'd be tired of wrestling over it. So many people are fighting so hard against the Lord, they don't even know they're in a battle with Him. You ever wonder why atheists fight so hard against manger scenes, and against the Ten Commandments in schools, against prayer in schools? I mean, if I didn't believe in something, I'd la just laugh at it. Why are they fighting so hard? Because the very conscience of man knows there's a God. They fight against it because they hope so diligently it's not true. Hmm? Well, I'm glad I come up in a day where the, the county courthouse had the biggest manger scene in town on it. Hmm? I did see where Cincinnati's putting up a Christmas tree. They're probably going to decorate it in rainbow, but they are putting up a Christmas tree. And can I say a Christmas tree has nothing to do with Christmas? other than in fact it's a symbol for Christmas well I'd be tired of wrestling if I wasn't saved fighting against time because friend every one of us has a number given to us number of days on this earth that's why we wear watches some of you need to turn yours back. Some of you need to get your teenager to turn it back on your clock, on your VCR, and on your car. Miss Nett and I was trying to figure out how to remember to turn hers back on the car all the way here. About ran four people off the road. Still didn't get it figured out. We're facing time. You know why cows don't wear wristwatches? They have no soul. Dogs don't wear wristwatches. Don't keep track of time. They have no soul. But it is appointed unto men wants to die and after this the judgment we all have an appointment we're going to keep with death right. and then we're going to face God and if I wasn't saved I'd, get, I'd be so tired of wrestling against time hmm? people do it all the time that's why you find women in their 40's trying to look 20 women in their 60's trying to look 40 men in their 60's thinking they're 15 huh? they're fighting against time there's nothing wrong with taking care of yourself. But these people aren't trying to take care of themselves. They're trying to live forever. I'd be so tired of wrestling. I'd be tired of wrestling with the fear that if I died today, where would I spend eternity? 
The Bible says in Isaiah 21, 4, My heart panteth, fearfulness frighted me, the night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. I'd be so tired of wrestling with the fear. I'd be so tired of wrestling with the fleshly strongholds. There's a lot of people say they'd get saved if they could quit doing whatever. Well, you'll never quit doing whatever. It's got a stronghold on you. But if you ever give your heart to Jesus, He can break the strongholds. Huh? But they don't understand that. And I'd be so tired of wrestling with the fleshly strongholds if I wasn't saved. I thought about this. I'd be so tired of wrestling, of having no future to look forward to. Now, friend, you're not going to live forever in this world. But your soul is going to live forever somewhere. There's only two places. There's heaven and then there's hell. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. It was never, never, ever intended for the soul of man to go there. But when man chose to sin, man must then choose to accept Jesus as Savior. And if he accepts Jesus as Savior, Jesus cleanses him from all sin and pays a sin debt. But if he rejects Jesus as Savior, he must pay for his own sins forever in hell. Amen. I'd be so tired, Brother Derek, of wrestling of not having a future. I'm glad I'm saved today. I'm glad my future is secure in Christ Jesus. I'm glad... One day, I made Jesus my choice. But if I wasn't saved, I would be of all men most miserable. May I ask you something? Do you know you're saved? If you can't in your mind and heart answer that, if your answer would be, I hope so, or I might be, well, you might not. And your hope may be in vain. I would sure make sure that I was saved today. And you can be saved today. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You can be saved from your sins today. All you've got to do is get, be tired of being lost. Be willing to call on the Lord Jesus and ask you to save you. If you're here today and you're saved, what are you doing to help somebody else get saved? The only thing we can take to heaven with us, Brother Phil, is other people. Amen. And the only way we can take them to heaven with us is pointing them to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Hmm. I wonder. Boy, last week I sure loved preaching. I'm glad I'm saved. This week... shudder to think what I'd be if I wasn't saved yes, sir. and those I know that aren't saved yeah. aren't ready to meet yeah. quit looking at their sin and start looking at their soul and it'll change your outlook for them yeah. if you're not saved why don't you believe on the Lord Jesus today if you are saved why don't you ask God to burden your heart for somebody that's not saved. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. So they're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the word of God. I'm glad for the gift of salvation. I'm glad for the handiwork of God. And I'm glad salvation's so simple. For by grace are you saved through faith. God, I pray if there's somebody amongst us today who's unsaved, that measure of faith that you've given to every man that they would enact, they would put into use, they'd step out and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn away from their sin and turn to the Savior. Get saved today. Father, those that are saved, Lord, help them to realize where they'd be without you. And then, God, give them a burden for others that are just like that. Bless now this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.